sinners and have mercy on us. Lord, our friends of sinners and have mercy on us. Lord, our friends of sinners and have mercy on us. O Heavenly King, Comforter, Spirit of Truth, God, who are present and fast all things, treasury of good things, and giver of life, and all the sequences of all inherit, and save our souls of the world. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, good will among men. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, good will among men. O Lord, thou shalt open my lips, and my mouth shall declare thy praise. It is time for the Lord to act, bless Master. Blessed is our God always, now and ever, unto the ages of ages. Pray for us, Lord. Lord, direct your steps. Remember us. To the Lord, that we will be in his kingdom always. So gone by thy grace. Calling to remembrance our most holy, most pure, most blessed and glorious Lady, Theotokos and Deborah Virgin Mary, with all the saints, let us commit ourselves and one another and all our life unto Christ our God. To thee is due all glory, honor, and worship to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto the ages of ages.
us pray to the Lord. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and keep us, O God, by thy grace. Blessed, glorious Lady Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary with all the saints, let us commit ourselves and one another and all our life unto Christ our God. To be our Lord. To thine is the dominion and thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen.
to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever. O Lord, save the pious, and hearken unto us. Peace in 
Peace be unto thee that readeth. And to thy spirit. Wisdom. said unto them, Go, and when they were come out, they went into the herd of swine. And behold, the whole herd of swine ran violently down a steep place into the sea, and perished in the waters. And they that kept them fled, and went their ways into the city, and told everything, and what was befallen to the possessed of the devils. And behold, the whole city came out to meet Jesus. And when they saw him, they besought him that he would depart out of their coast. And he entered into a ship, and passed over, and came into his own city. Peace be unto thee, the greatest of the tidings. Say with our whole soul and with our whole mind, let us see. O Lord Almighty, the God of our fathers, we pray thee, hearken and have mercy. Have mercy on us, O God, according to thy great mercy, we pray thee, hearken and have mercy. And for our Lord, the very most reverend, Hilarion, first hierarch of the Russian Church abroad, and for all our brethren in Christ. Again, we pray for this land, its authorities, and armed forces, and for all who with faith and piety dwell therein. 
and for the God-preserved Russian land and its Orthodox people, both in the homeland and in the diaspora, and for their salvation. deliver his people from enemies, visible and invisible, and confirm in us oneness of mind, brotherly love and by thee. Again we pray for our brethren, the priests, priest monks, and all our brethren in Christ. Again, we pray for the blessed and ever memorable holy orthodox patriarchs, for pious kings and right believing queens, and for the founders of this holy temple, and for all our fathers and brethren, on to the rest before us, and the orthodox here in the world. of souls and bodies with compunction and broken hearts we fall down before thee and groaning we cry unto thee heal the sicknesses heal the passions of the soul and body of thy servants metropolitan jonah the archpriest george the archpriest michael Cassania, natalia maria and maria daria catherine the reader isaac helen anastasia paul alexandra home kosara sophia home Mary, Nina, John, Anna, and Silka, and pardon them, for thou art kind-hearted, all their transgressions, voluntary and involuntary, and quickly raise them up again from the bed of sickness. We pray thee, hearken and have mercy. persecuted for their faith, especially the Christian faithful in Liberoc, Syria, Palestine, and across the Middle East, that the Lord God will send down upon them every spiritual weapon to endure their tribulations, and that he will grant that peace which passes all understanding upon the region and throughout the whole world as a foretaste of his heavenly kingdom. Mightest look down with a merciful eye upon the people of the Ukrainian land and make her unconquerable by those who work strife. We pray thee, O kind hearted Lord, hearken and have mercy. Again, we pray that thou wouldst enlighten with the light of thy divine wisdom the thoughts of those darkened with hardness of heart and fortify thy faithful in the Ukrainian land, keeping them unharmed. We pray thee, O almighty creator, hearken and have mercy. Thou who hast given us thy commandments to love thee, our God, and our neighbor, make hatred, hostility, offense, wrath, and the spilling of blood disease, that true charity might reign in the hearts of the people of the Ukrainian land. We pray thee, O our Savior, hearken and have mercy. Again, we pray to them that bring offerings and do good works in this holy and all-venerable temple. For them that minister and them that chant, and for all the people here present who wait thy great and abundant mercy. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. 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 Lord, have Christ, 
Christ our God, and look down with thy merciful eye upon the sorrow and greatly painful cry of thy children abiding in the Ukrainian land. Deliver thy people from civil strife, make to cease the spilling of blood, and turn back the misfortune set against them. Lead unto sanctuary those bereft of shelter, feed the hungry, comfort those who weep, and unite the divided. Leave not thine own flock who abide in sorrows on account of their kinsmen to diminish, but rather, as thou art benevolent, give speedy reconciliation. Soften the hearts of the unmerciful, and convert them to the knowledge of thee. Grant peace to thy church and to her children, that with one heart and one mouth we may glorify thee, our Lord and Savior, unto the ages of ages. to the Lord. Be faithful for the catechumens. Let us pray that the Lord will have mercy on them, that he will catechize them with the word of truth, that he will reveal unto them the gospel of righteousness, that he will unite them with his holy Catholic and apostolic church. Save them, have mercy on them, help them, and keep them, O God, by thy grace. Be catechumens, bow your heads to the Lord. That they also with us may glorify the most honorable and majestic name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto the ages of ages. As many as our catechumens depart, as many as our catechumens depart. Have mercy on us and keep us, O God, by thy grace. Wisdom. For unto thee is due all glory, honor, and worship, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Again and again in peace, let us praise the Lord. and the salvation of our souls let us pray to the Lord for the peace of the whole world the good estate of the holy churches of God and the union of all let us pray to the Lord for this holy temple and for them that with faith reverence and the fear of God in our area let us pray to the Lord that we may be delivered from all tribulation wrath and necessity let us pray to the Lord Save us, have mercy in us, and keep us, O God, by thy grace. Wisdom. Let always being God and unto thy dominion we may send up glory unto thee, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto the ages of ages.
most holy patriarch of Moscow, and of Russia, our commander of the Holy Trinity, Saint Sergius Lavra, and our Lord, the very most reverend Marion, Metropolitan of Eastern America, New York, First Hierarch of Russian Church abroad. May the Lord God remember in his kingdom, always, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. This land, its authorities, and armed forces, and the Orthodox faithful that dwell herein, the suffering Ukrainian land, and her Orthodox faithful, and the Orthodox faithful of every land, may the Lord God remember in his kingdom, always, now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. The clergy, the monastics, all who suffer and are persecuted for the Orthodox faith, may the Lord God remember in his kingdom, always, now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. May the Lord God remember in his kingdom, always, now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. The aged, the infirm, the imprisoned, those who are bedridden or absent with cause, and all you Orthodox Christians, may the Lord God, God remember in his kingdom, always, now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Peace be 
for you for the remission of sins. Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. The cross, the grave, the resurrection on the third day, the ascension into the heavens, the sitting at the right hand, the second and glorious coming again. Thine own, of thine own, we offer unto thee in behalf of all and for Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. 
Savior Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. Having called to remembrance all the saints again and again in peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the precious gifts offered and sanctified, let us pray to the Lord. That our God, the lover of mankind, having accepted them upon his holy and most heavenly noetic altar as an odor of spiritual fragrance, will send out upon us divine grace and the gift of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. That we may be delivered from all tribulation, wrath, and necessity. Let us pray to the Lord. Have mercy on us and keep us, O God, by thy grace. That the whole day may be perfect, holy, peaceful, and sinless. Let us ask of the Lord. An angel of peace, a faithful guide, a guardian of our souls and bodies. Let us ask of the Lord. Sins and offenses, let us ask of the Lord. Things good and profitable for our souls and peace for the world, let us ask of the Lord. That we may complete the remaining time of our life in peace and repentance, let us ask of the Lord. Our Christian ending. Most peaceful and a good defense before the judgment seat of Christ. Let us ask. Having asked for the unity of the faith and the communion of the Holy Spirit, let us commit ourselves and one another and all our life unto Christ our God. And well, save us, O Master, that with boldness and without condemnation. We may dare to call upon thee, the heavenly God, as Father, and to say, Our
Deacon and Deacon Joe Lyon, for the service of the Jackson of the Patsy. Show us to the cross, the destruction of the Father and the Son of the коснулся до закона о доме, скрипей твои With the fear of God and with faith and love, draw on. I believe, O Lord, and I confess that Thou art truly the Christ, the Son of the living God, who camest into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. Moreover, I believe that this is truly thy most pure body, and this is truly thine own precious blood. Wherefore, I pray thee, have mercy on me, and forgive me my transgressions, voluntary and involuntary, in word and deed, in knowledge and in ignorance, and vouchsafe me to partake without condemnation of thy most pure mysteries unto the remission of my sins and life everlasting. Amen. 
of thy mystical sufferer, Son of God, receive me today as a communicant, for I will not speak of the mysteries of thine enemies, nor will I give thee a kiss as to Judas, but like the thief do I confess thee, remember me, O Lord, in thy kingdom. Let not the communion of thy most pure mysteries be unto me for judgment or condemnation, O Lord, but unto the healing of soul and body. Amen.
thine inheritance. unto the ages of ages. of the divine, holy, most pure, immortal, heavenly, and life-giving, fearful mysteries of Christ, let us worthily give thanks unto the Lord. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and keep us, O God, by thy grace. Having asked that the whole day may be perfect, holy, peaceful, and sinless, let us commit ourselves and one another and all our life unto Christ our God. For thou art our sanctification, and unto thee do we send up glory, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. In peace let us depart. Let us pray to the Lord. Blessed and bless thee, the sanctified and the put their trust in thee. Save thy people and bless thy inheritance, preserve the fullness of thy church. Sanctify them to love the beauty of thy house. Do thou glorify them by thy divine power. And forsake us not to put our hope in thee. Give peace to thy world, to the churches, to the priests, and to all thy people. For every good gift and perfect gift is from above. And come down from thee, the Father of lights, and the need we send up glory and thanksgiving and worship. Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Today's Gospel and Epistle readings start with the words of St. Paul to the Romans, where he is praying for the salvation of Israel, his beloved people. Now Israel has been given many things throughout history for their salvation unto righteousness. They've been given Sabbaths, They've been given fasts, feasts, tabernacles, prophets, the great mysteries that we know today that have been transformed into Christianity that we treasure greatly. And yet St. Paul prays for their salvation, knowing that these things, these Old Testament things which are so wonderful and perfect unto righteousness, were not enough for salvation. He says that they have a zeal for God, but it is not according to knowledge. You can imagine that same words can be applied to us, brothers and sisters, where we have a great zeal for God. We love the services. We love the church. We love our brothers and sisters in the church, our parishioners. We enjoy coffee hour with each other, sharing each other's lives. And all of this wondrous zeal, if it's lacking Christ truly in our lives, it's lacking that knowledge that St. Paul wishes for the Israelite people. 
Because, as we know from the history, the Jews, having had all this rich deposit of Old Testament grace and miracles, rejected Christ. They saw Christ healing on the Sabbath and said, No, no, no. I'm sorry. I know you're performing a great miracle. And obviously we know ourselves that this can only be done by the will of God. We have to reject you because you're dealing with this on the Sabbath. See, brothers and sisters, they preferred their own version of righteousness to the righteousness of God. And they've rejected Christ. This is echoed, unfortunately, in, in the Gospel reading, where Christ is coming to this city that's very rarely mentioned. It happens but once in the Scriptures. And He's coming there on the heels of a wonderful miracle. I, this is why I kind of hope that you guys read before and after, not just the daily readings. Because just before He comes to this city, where the two people possess the demons are. He was on the waves, he was in the waters, he was in a boat. And there was a great tempest. Everything was a flutter, and Christ slept. And his apostles were there, and they feared for their lives, and they said, Lord, save us, we perish. And Christ wakens, of course, and he embraces them, and he does it in very specific language. He says, Ye of little faith. Not ye of no faith, or ye faithless, but ye of little faith. Because they started out the right way. Lord save us. They acknowledge His dominion, His sovereignty. And then they say, we perish, because they didn't trust in Him to save them. We brothers and sisters have Christ physically in the church, in the Holy Tabernacle, in the reserved gifts, in Holy Communion. Christ is with us, and yet we too have this fear. We say, we perish, Lord. But this church, same as the Ark of Noah, same as the boat of the Apostles, even though it's tempest-tossed, even though the waves of the world often encroach upon us, that batter us, we're always safe because we have Christ. So we have a boldness in the world. We have a strength in the world that's not our own strength, but it's the strength of God. We don't have to be afraid of all of these things that are going on in the world because Christ is with us. God is with us. Emmanuel. So this great miracle happens. And Christ calms the waters. He calms the winds. And the apostles marvel and say, What manner of man is this that the storm, the seas, the wind should obey him? And it's only by divine providence. As we move into today's gospel, that this answer comes from the mouths of demons. Whereas Christ approaches the two who are possessed, who are living in these tombs, and they say, proclaiming Christ, that He is God, that He is mighty, and He is indeed the Son of God, from the mouths of demons. That was the Apostles' answer. And they were exceedingly fierce. No man or woman could approach these tombs. So no one could take these poor men to Christ for healing. But Christ came to them. See, God often gives us our gifts, gives us these graces, even before our repentance, even before we're worthy of them. Even before the creation of mankind in Genesis, before man was even made, when God is speaking amongst Himself, says, let us make him in our image and likeness. He's already offering honor to man before man even existed, before man has even done one thing to deserve it. So if you have these gifts, know that this is a great blessing from God, but also that something more is required of us. It's what we're doing now might not be where we should be, but there's always room for improvement and for change. Because faith in God, faith in Christ, faith in our Lord Jesus is meant to be transformative. I read this wonderful exposition, this wonderful understanding about holy transfiguration, where we're all blessing grapes, we're blessing grapes. And we think, well, that's wonderful because of the harvest. But there's a spiritual meaning that I was blown away by, that I truly loved. 
because it's an icon for all of us in every day of our Christian spiritual life. The humble grape by itself is wonderful and sweet. But the same grape with effort and time and care can become precious wine. The wine that you would gift to a friend in honor of some great occasion. But more than that, brothers and sisters, wine can become the most precious blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. That is the great calling. It's not enough to be a grape, even though grapes are wonderful. We have a royal dignity. We have a humanity that's been enlightened by Christ, the fullness of our humanity that we need to live up to. And where we fail, we have confession. Where we need strengthening, we have communion. But we can't be content with where we are. And we can never be fooled into thinking, well, it's enough where I am. Look at all the things that I have, because there's something more intended. The honor is given before we're worthy, but it's not intended to be enough for us. So we see these two demons, and they see Christ approaching, and they proclaim His glory. And we see so many things about them that truly are sad, because unfortunately not only demons can fall into these same sort of temptations. The demons fight, but they fear Christ. How many of us fight the Lord in many ways? I feel like fasting today, or praying today, or going to church today, or standing up for my faith. But we do fear God. But we fight against Him. The demons attack. They attack all that's good. They attack the creation of God. They attack humanity. But they tremble seeing Christ approach. Let us never be attacking of one another because we are God's creation. Don't attack God in the image of your brother and then tremble about it later, but love one another. The malice of the demons is beyond comprehension, except for we do it ourselves when we're not careful. They see that they're going to be evicted. They're going to be rejected from the creation of God out of these people and expelled, exercised in common parlance. And they say, wow, Lord, why don't you send us into those pigs, into those swine? Knowing that they could do some small amount of damage, they could destroy these pigs. But you can see they're insidious because they knew that these Jews who, against the laws of Moses, were keeping swine, unclean animals, would reject the Lord because He was taking away material possessions. Ungodly material possessions, but material possessions. They said, send us into the swine. It shows how powerless they are. They have no control, not even over a single pig, not over a single animal, but by the will of God. So they have to ask Christ. Powerless, they have to ask. And God allows it. Let's go into the swine. And here's the sad thing that happens. The town all goes out to meet Christ. They see the two men healed of their infirmity. These people who are so fierce that everyone feared to go there. That none could approach. And they see them in their right minds. This great miracle. But they bemoan their material losses. And they send Christ away, and Christ goes to another city. You know, there's this wonderful thing that I was reading in Isaiah, kind of randomly yesterday, where Isaiah goes through and is explaining to the Jewish people the great trials and tribulations that they suffer because of their unbelief. And he goes currently and historically and goes into the future. And you think all is lost because God has applied every remedy. He gives to the Jews great honors in hopes that they'll want to earn them. The hopes that they will hope to grow into them, to acquire more honors, to give them hope. And that doesn't work. So He sends them scourges. He sends them infirmities. He sends them difficulties. Enslavement, capture, uh, dominion by foreign powers. And that doesn't work. 
No remedy worked for these ancient Jews. And Isaiah, crying out, is saying, Woe unto my people. And then, just before the end of the chapter, we hear the words of the Lord, in, in, written in the first person, where he says, Come, let us reason together. The reason that is Christ. Come, let us reason together, says the Lord. And although your sins be purple, I will make them whiter than snow. And though they be scarlet, I'll make them white as wool. <laughs> what wonderful words. What beautiful words. Whatever our sins are, if we have Christ with us, and He is in the church, we don't have anything to fear. And if we're granted the great honors, we know what to do with them. We need to use them. It's like having a Bible on the shelf. It's so wonderful you have a Bible on the shelf. Read it. You have the fasts of the church. Use them. If you notice that you can't do without milk, look at that as a weakness you have to overcome. If you notice other weaknesses, that fasting makes you cranky, being kind. I once heard from a, a friend of mine, who's a monastic in Jordanville, I asked him, Father, how do you guys pray when you're so tired? Because the monastics up there, they sleep five, six hours a night, and they're always tired, and I'm exhausted too. I'm a seminarian, I get more sleep than they do. He says, Alex, at the time I was Alex, he says, Alex, if I never prayed when I was tired, I'd never know how to pray when I was tired. Do the things that are difficult. Don't give up. We have Christ with us. If you fall, we have confession. If you need strengthening, come to communion. Don't be like the Jews of old who had zeal without knowledge, but be knowledgeable. Come to Christ, the source of all knowledge, for He is the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. Oh, I'm a little bit <laughs> emotional. The blessing of the Lord be upon you through His grace and love for mankind, always, now, and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Glory to Thee, O Christ, God, our hope, glory to Thee. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, O God, and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Glory to the Lord, and 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 to the Lord, from the dead through the intercessions of his most fair mother of the holy glorious and all praised apostles of the holy prophet forerunner and baptist of the lord john of our father among the saints john archbishop of shanghai and san francisco the wonder worker of the higher martyr eusebius bishop of samosata of the new higher martyr gennadius the priest of the new higher martyrs theodore and gabriel of the new higher martyr <coughs> michael stefanovsky of the martyr zeno and his servant zenos of philadelphia of the martyrs Galactia and Juliana and Stephaninus of Constantinople, of St. Gregory, Metropolitan of Alarsha, of St. Alban, Proto Martyr of Britain, of the martyr Pompeian and the 1480 martyrs of Samaria and Palestine, of all those saints whom we commemorate this day, and of all the saints, have mercy in us and save us, for he is good and the lover of mankind.
and sisters a few brief announcements. <clears throat> First of all, we would like to ask that you remember Metropolitan Jonah in your prayers. As those of you who are on the email list already know, the Metropolitan has been in the hospital since late last week and he's experiencing some cardiac issues. We hear that he is resting comfortably and God willing will be discharged within the next day or so, but we ask that you keep him in your prayers. <clears throat> Because of his hospitalization and also because of the vigil that we will have tomorrow evening at 6.30 p.m., there will be no talk this, this week in the upstairs library on Orthodox. Those will resume next week. Um, as I just mentioned, tomorrow evening we will have vigil at 6.30 p.m., followed on Tuesday morning, hours of divine liturgy at 6.40 a.m. on the occasion of the Nativity of St. John, the forerunner and Baptist of the Lord. This coming Wednesday, we will celebrate a Malieven and a Kaffist at 6.30 p.m. in honor of the right believing Prince Peter in monasticism David and his wife, Princess Sephronia, in monasticism after Sinia. Um, as you may have heard from the past several years, these are the patron saints of marriage within the Russian church, and we hold this service in particular in connection with the All-Russian Day of Family, Love, and Faithfulness, which is celebrated on their feast day. Um, once again, this will take place at 6.30 p.m. on Wednesday, and it will be bilingual as well. Um, our choir master asks that uh, we make the following couple of announcements. The first being that there will be the children singing the first rehearsal today at 10.45 next door. And also a reminder that, um, as the announcement has been made over the past several weeks, if you as, as a community could begin to help with the singing of the communion prayer, as you probably noticed, we have many members of the choir who come down and partake of the mysteries as well, and it would help us to allow them a short break so that they can focus on receiving the mysteries prayerfully as they allow us to do by allowing us to pray within the church. Once again, for those who have received Holy Communion, please to remain in church for the reading of the Holy Communion prayers. And as always, all are welcome to join us next door for the breaking of bread as well.